In this video, we're going to be looking at the theory of acids and bases. We're probably used to thinking about acids and bases from a young age, thinking that they have various properties, such as they're corrosive, um, acids have a bitter taste, etc. But here we're going to look at the general theory of acids, and we're going to look at it through two definitions. But first of all, all acids are a source of H plus ions. That's the main thing. So just to write that in there, we're going to look at a more technical definition in a minute. But what this means is that any substance that, when dissolved in water, releases a H plus ion, we consider it to be an acid. It gives rise to the properties that we consider to be acidic. So the first technical definition we're looking at is the Arrhenius definition, which is that an acid is a substance that dissociates in water to produce H plus ions, pretty similar to the first one. We know that an acid is a substance that, let's call it HA, where H is just a hydrogen and A is any other part of the molecule. What happens is it breaks apart to form two ions, one of which is a H plus ion and the other of which is A minus. So basically in this HA bond, the two electrons in the bond have jumped onto the A part of the molecule, we call it A minus, and we're just left with the proton in solution. What this means essentially when we bring it through to the Arrhenius definition, when we dissolve something in water, our acid, HA, dissolves in water to produce H3O plus, which is the hydronium ion, plus A minus. So in reality, it's this hydronium ion here that's the source of all acids. The reason for that is that H plus ions don't exist on their own. Basically, they're too small to have this charge associated with it, okay, or there's too much charge density here. So what happens is whenever there's a H plus around and there's any water molecules around, the water simply just bonds with the H plus to form H3O plus. I looked at that type of bonding in the covalent bonding video and it's called a date of covalent bond. And it looks something like this, where you've got your standard water, which one of its lone pairs is bonded to the H plus. So overall, that species has a positive charge. So what's a base according to Arrhenius? Well, a base is a substance that dissociates the water to produce OH minus ions instead. So for this one, we're going to look at a specific substance that is basic. So NaOH, what happens is that substance breaks apart to form Na plus and OH minus ions when in solution. And it's this OH minus ion there that is the base. Technically, any base that dissolves in water is actually an alkali. So this part here is called an alkali, which is a source of OH minus ions. Just to briefly explain the word dissociates, dissociates means breaks apart. So it means you have an original species and it just breaks apart to form two other things in this case. We're now going to go back and have a look at the acids and consider a strong acid and a weak acid. So looking back at my equation here, when I had HA plus H2O, we're now going to look at a strong acid. Well, H hydrogen chloride, HCl, that's just a covalently bonded molecule. If there was absolutely no water around, that would exist as a covalent bond, and that would just be a molecule that travels around. But in the presence of any water whatsoever, what happens is that bond here between the hydrogen and chlorine breaks. So you get a breaking of that bond and that's dissociation to form H3O plus, which is the hydronium ion because that H plus just straight away bonds with the H2O in a date of covalent bond and Cl minus. So any substance that dissociates completely when added to water is a strong acid. So hydrochloric acid such as HNO3 which is nitric acid, H2SO4 which is sulfuric 
they all are strong acids and they completely dissociate. But for a weak acid, what happens is essentially the molecule doesn't completely dissociate. It doesn't break apart to form the hydronium ions. So if I go back just to the generic HA plus H2O going to H3O plus plus A minus, this only partially dissociates. The reason I've gone with the generic case there is because if I actually put in the chemical formula, it's a little bit complicated. So ethanoic acid, for example, is CH3COOH. And if I add that to H2O, only a small, tiny percent of it actually dissociates to form H3O plus plus CH3COO minus. Remember, this is the acid, but we only get a very small amount of dissociation relative to the amount of the original molecule. Okay, so weak acids would include ethanoic acid, otherwise known as acetic acid, which is that one there, citric acid, okay, and some others, okay. But basically, for a weak acid, it only partially breaks apart. For a strong acid, it fully breaks apart. So we're now going to look at the other definition of an acid. I have been talking about that definition indirectly without mentioning it, and it's called the Bronsted-Lowry theory of acids. So with this theory, we have said that Acids are proton donors. Well, when I looked at the reaction of an acid, any substance, like HCl, that can donate a proton to another molecule, that means it's an acid. So HCl is a good proton donor, strong acid. Ethanoic acid doesn't really want to give all of its protons to H2O. Therefore, it's a poor proton donor, and so it's a weak acid saying that there's going to be a lot of H3O plus ions, but relative to the amount of starting acid, it's going to be fairly low. What happens in this reaction is that water accepts the proton from HCl, and so the HCl donates its proton to the water. That makes the HCl a proton donor which is a Bronsted-Lowry proton donor, so an acid, and this is a Bronsted-Lowry proton acceptor. So now we're going to look at the case of ammonia, and we can see that ammonia molecules take a proton from water. And we're left with the ammonium ion, NH4+, and the hydroxide ion. We're now going to go back and have a look at another reaction and look at each individual species in a certain way. So the reaction I'm going to go to is my ethanoic acid reacting with water. Technically it just dissolves in the water. So let's have a look. We know that this part here was going to donate its proton. So that is an acid. We know that water was going to take the hydrogen ion from ethanoic acid. So that is our base. Now I want to look and see now what actually happens when I dissolve these things. We set up an equilibrium. And for more on the equilibrium topic, see the chemical equilibrium section. So we've set up a reversible reaction. Now if this reaction was to go in the backward direction, which is this way, let's now consider my reacting species. I would have this ethanoate ion it's called and I'd have this which is H3O plus well what's going to happen in this case this is going to be my acid and this is going to be my base okay because in solution these things can react in the forward reaction and in the backward reaction okay and an equilibrium is set up and we have a position of equilibrium over to a certain side. It just so happens that the position of equilibrium in this case is very, very far over to the left. So we know that the ethanoic acid reacts to form the ethanoate ion. That acid gets converted to a base, and that base gets converted to the acid. These are known as conjugate 
acid base pairs. Likewise, if I was to consider what happens to the water, we have a base going to an acid and an acid going to the base. These are also conjugate acid base pairs. So the conjugate acid base pairs here are conjugate pair is any pair consisting of an acid and a base that differ by one proton. So we've gone through the theory of acids and bases here. The main thing to take from this is that acids are proton donors, bases are proton acceptors. We have strong acids that fully dissociate, i.e. break apart, will give away all of their protons, and we have weak acids which don't give away all their protons. I'm now going to recap some of the reactions of acids. So we can have an acid so the first reaction we come across is an acid and a base to form a salt with water. So a salt is a substance formed when the hydrogen in an acid is replaced by a positive ion, usually a metal ion or an ammonium ion. Let's look at another reaction of acids. We have an acid plus a metal, which gives a salt plus hydrogen. So we could have um, sulfuric acid this time, H2SO4, plus lithium to give lithium sulfate plus hydrogen. So the last reaction is that of an acid but the metal carbonate, you get a salt, carbon dioxide and water. So let's have a look at, let's say nitric acid this time, HNO3 plus a metal carbonate, let's just look at calcium carbonate. We form a salt. Well, the salt that's formed here is going to be hydrogen gets replaced by the metal, so we're going to have calcium nitrate. Ca is a two plus ion, so we need two nitrates because each nitrate is one minus. We get water and carbon dioxide. Now, to balance that, we just need two of those. Okay, so there are the three reactions of acids that we need to know. Okay, so in this video, we've covered the theory of acids and the reactions of acids.